Hey everybody, I'm Andy Smith, your hostess with the mostess. I'm a 30 year comic book veteran, having worked for Marvel Comics, DC Comics, Image Comics, Cross Generation, Ominous Press, you name it, I've probably worked for them. And I do other things art wise outside of comics in the field of advertising. I've also written some books on drawing comics you might have seen, uh, drawing American manga superheroes, Drawing Dynamic Comics was my first book. And I also did the handy little How to Draw Superhero sketchbook where all you need is a pencil because you do all the work right inside the book. Enough about that. This is the Book Look series. The Book Look series is where I grab a book off my library. You can see the tons of books I have behind me. And I go through it page by page with you so you can see if it's a book that you might want to buy. I like to know what I want to buy before I buy it, and I feel this is a way to give you some insight into these books. So join me for today's book look. Thanks. Well, hello everybody. It is time for another book look. This time we are going back in time. This book is from 1957. But before we get started on figure drawing by Dale Nichols, a system of drawing and design, I'm Andy Smith, your host with the most 31 year veteran of the comic book industry, working for Marvel, DC, Image, Acclaim, you name it. I've probably worked for them. Check out my website, www.andysmithart.com. Link in the description below. You saw the core draft video. That is my new project that I'm so excited about. I want you to check it out. Link is in the description below. Go over there. Check it out. If you like Conan, Dungeons and Dragons, Game of Thrones, you will like this book. If you've never read a graphic novel before, but you're a role player, role play gamer, you know what I mean? Check this book out. There's something for everybody. Uh, five different covers, two different t-shirts, a beanie, lots of stuff. Go check it out. It's because you guys uh, support. It allows me to bring you uh, my Astonishing Comics. That's right. That's the name of my company, Astonishing Comics. Line of uh, books. Anyhow, Figure Drawing by Dale Nichols. I saw this on eBay. Years ago. I've had this book for over a decade. Um, it's from 1957. I love the fact it's from Watson Guptill Publications because my book, Drawing Dynamic Comics and Drawing American Manga Superheroes, came out from Watson Guptill Publications. So I did not know that they were that uh, old of a publisher. Now, I got this off eBay. I thought it looked kind of interesting. It didn't cost me much. Like I said, it came out in, uh, that's not the Indicia part. I'm looking for the part that actually has the date. I know it's 1957. It must be here somewhere. Oh, I know I saw it somewhere. Because this is just about the author. All right. Well, we'll find it. Anyhow, uh, let's just go through it. Uh, I, I got to be honest, I didn't really learn much from this. I will say, I, I like to say that every How to Draw book um, I have, I learned something from. I'm not quite sure. Oh, there it is, 1957. I'm not quite sure I learned much from this one, but 
you know, it's not a very thick book. It's only, uh, there's like maybe 70 pages. You know, you've got the standard proportions. Now remember, I'll keep saying it, 1957, uh, not, uh, you know, the art's not bad, but it's not, uh, it's not fantastic. So, you know, once again, standard proportions, eight head high. Drawing a female, uh, shoulders and hips are about the same width, you know. So there is some, some cool stuff here. Um, this is pretty accurate where from the crotch down to the ankle, it is a straight line. Nothing should pop off of this straight line. Whereas on the outside of the leg, and this goes for men and women, it bows from the hip to the knee and then bows again from the knee to the ankle. So stuff like that, even this quick drawing of a head, you know, it pretty much works. Uh, you know, I take it back. I haven't looked at this book, like I said, in years. Uh, probably seven or eight years. Um, so maybe I'm a little too harsh on it. I mean, the principles still work. All right, let's see. Comparison of male and female figures. So this is what I meant. Uh, once again, 1957. Uh, not the best drawings, but the, you know, the thing I like is, I mean, they're kind of stiff. But you do have, at least for the male, you know, angular, angular lines for masculine uh, figures, male figures. And that still holds true. Whereas for women, you want nice curved lines for feminine figures, um, which still holds true. Oh, it is pouring outside my window today. Action. Uh, this is true. It is a hinge joint, but it's more of a ball joint right here because your leg can rotate and stuff. So that's actually not, not accurate. It is not a hinge joint. It's a ball joint for your hips because your legs can rotate, whereas a hinge is your knee and like your elbow. This is true, when arms swing away from the body, they do form an arc that helps you keep the proportion of uh, any limb. The legs form an arc too when they uh, go from the body. So not much there. So mutiny on Cat Island, seek expression in line. And, and this holds true. This, if you just look at this simple uh, stick figure representation here of this, there is nice action going through it with the way the lines intersect each other. It's this, which is just kind of wonky as all get out. I mean, that's just, that's, that's pretty wonky. Turning the head. So front view and look, three easy steps, if only, uh, three quarter view in uh, three easy steps and <laughs> oh it's fun because I don't know if this goes into a ton of detail uh, turning the head isn't difficult when one remembers that the circle constructed in a rectangle is actually a sphere got to remember you're drawing in three dimensions so that is dead on you're not drawing a circle you're drawing a sphere it's three-dimensional so you need to keep that in mind when uh when drawing and thinking about shapes now these are nice you know by the artist the author of the book they're very stylized but they fit right in with like the 1950s when this book came out Ooh, turning the figure all right let's see we're turning the figure guys okay not much there i mean really it's just like hold on let me see let me backtrack. Turning the figure. One brief paragraph. You read that and you now know how to turn a figure. Okay. Profile of the head. I do like this. The different uh, 
Different profiles we have here to make up different male heads, same with the female. Different profiles, uh, they all look kind of uh, attractive. Forming the breasts. Well, now we're getting into some fun, aren't we? God, gravity, posture, and age form the breasts. Basically, the breast is a sphere. This sphere is affected by gravity, which in turn relates to posture. Age determines size and effects of increasing pressure of gravity droop and the, the breast as muscles weaken with advancing years. Hear that? If you don't want your breast to droop, and this goes for men, keep doing some push-ups. Work those chest muscles, just saying. Um, but this is good. These, these are nice. You know, this is a nice twist here. It's very simplified, but it, it works. You know? And uh, that's it. You get two pages on that. And then he gets into perspective. I should Google search more about the artists of this book to see what he actually did. Uh, you know, if he did advertising or most of his art was done like this. Styling the hair from the 1950s. However, what I like about this is you can see block hair and hexagonal shape. So you can see, so when you're drawing, and I do do this, I do do this, uh, I'll draw the head, and then when I do the hair, I'll block in a big shape that I want the hair to set into, and then you work the hair inside of whatever shape, even like this. Look at that one. Really boofed up there, hair. So this is, you know, you can learn from every book. So I take it back. I did pick things up from this book. I just haven't looked at it in forever. And the, the nice thing about this book, you guys, you guys can't smell it, but I can. And this book has a lovely smell. In fact, usually in these book looks, you never see me. But uh, for this one, you will. Here I go. Oh, the smell of used books, baby. Who doesn't love the smell of a good old book? I tell you, my ADD gets to me. When I pulled it off my shelf today, this happened right here, and that really bummed me out. So I'm going to have to get some glue and just glue that sucker back on there. Kind of bummed me out. Expression. A little bit. Now, I got to admit, I like this because when it comes to doing facial expressions, people get too wrapped up into, oh, what are these muscles doing? What lines are on the face because of this specific facial expression and such? And the thing I like about this is um, it's simple. If you simplify your expressions, you can add the detail of a realistic nose and wrinkles and things like that later. But out of the gate, it's eyebrows, eyes, mouth. You know, so simplify your expressions first before you really get into it. And that'll help you a lot. Facial types and laughter. That does say and laughter. Yes, it does. Uh, so, you know, just different facial types here, working with the construction method he was talking about. Uh, drawing lips. Now, this is great. If you look at these lips right here, not these, but these, who's that remind you of? Bruce Tim. You look at Bruce Tim's women, and when they smile and they just have this nice curve, this, they have that shape. You know, when you're drawing more realistic, you want to put the little indent in here from the philtrum. Yes, the philtrum is that little indent beneath your nose. See, learn something new every day. But your mouth, just your mouth area is based on a cylinder because your teeth wrap around. So you have to remember when you draw people smiling and stuff in a three quarter view like this, you won't really see the other side. You can see it here, but this is a really big wide smile. So it, it it's not always that you won't, but it just depends. This is good too. Suggest it with line. And this is basically line of action. Swoop, swoop. It 
This guy definitely has a very graphic style, as you can tell. Not lots of grays, just blacks and black and white. I mean, this is a very nice graphic shape he has going on here. I wouldn't be surprised this guy was into uh, animation, or not animation, but uh, graphic, uh, graphic design and such. Exaggeration, yes. Let's see what he's doing with exaggeration. This is cool. If you look at my book, Drawing Dynamic Comics, I, I, and I wrote that book before I even knew about or saw this book, I actually have an example of doing shapes like this and then fitting the head inside these shapes. So there is a way you draw a head. Now this is really cartoony here, but depending on the artist, that could probably work even in my style finishing it up, you know, the way I, I do my finish style. So it's good to think of an overall shape for somebody's face. I mean, if somebody's built like this, real long like this, they, they're probably thin and tall, whereas this guy might be short and stout. Uh, draping women's costumes. Ah. I mean, it's pretty basic. He doesn't get too much into into folds and stuff, I don't believe. Uh, dra yeah, I mean, boom. Dra draping men's costumes. So apparently back then, men just wore suits, and that was it. Um, I do like this. This is kind of busy. So he simplified it, and he simplified it some more. But, you know, this works. You know, I've seen artists in comics that draw this type of, you could say, uh, detail and wrinkles, and then I've seen this type. Everybody, of course, back then didn't know what jeans were. They just wore dress pants everywhere. But it's cool because you see when you lift your leg up how the dress pant hikes up. So it won't, uh, the, the opening of the pant leg won't be down here because he's lifting his knee up, so it pulls it up some. Hats. Hats are always important. I mean, you know, it's nice. Uh, like I said, this book doesn't go too in-depth, as you can see, into how to. I mean, this is the basic gist of any hat. It wraps around the head like this, and whatever you do with the top of it and the brim and stuff, just, you know, you can just vary it. But every hat will basically have a, an opening like that. Uh, racial types. Caucasian. Uh, a, a black man. That was appropriate back then. Uh, Mongoloid, I guess that's still appropriate. I don't know. Um, Spanish, looks like Sylvester Stallone. Drawing children. Now, out of this whole book, one good thing is this right here. You know, if anything, when you're drawing, you're like, oh, this is great. So this is an adult. Now I'm drawing somebody that's 15 years old. Oh, okay. And, and look, yeah, we all know there are 15-year-olds that are taller than, you know, me. I'm 5'10", and I know some 15-year-olds that are 6 feet tall and stuff. But just in general, 15-year-old um, to an adult, 9-year-old, 3-year-old, 1-year-old. So, and in the proportions of the head, and in some nice, uh, cute drawings of kids. So... Shading. Really basic, but once again, sometimes basic is good. You know, uh, people will sometimes get too wrapped up in the details when they do their shading. So sometimes it's good just to think of the overall basic shape and pop in, you know, the light here obviously is coming from the right and just pop in these hard shapes like this. And if you want to do reflected light, you just pull in some reflected light from the left and do some edge lighting down the side. You can see where this guy's uh, triangle technique here really comes into play. Here's a triangle technique. He's got the shading and you can see how it comes down and that's, uh, that's, that's pretty good. 
that's workable. What we got here? A final word. So he's going to leave us with a final word. Um, I'm assuming this is the type of work this gentleman did uh, for a living back then. Very stylized, very graphic uh, interpretation for uh, his clients. And it, you know, it works. Don Quixote. You know, it's a very stylized look, but uh, it, it definitely works. I like it. I like, like I said, the graphicness of it with the black and white, not a lot of gray tones and stuff. But, I mean, that's it. That is, uh, it's a, that's actually kind of Alex Toth looking. I mean, that that is it. It's not a very long book, but I found it pretty cool. I'm going to glue this bit right here because it drives me crazy that that happened. So uh, figure drawing, a system of drawing and design by Dale Nichols. And I do like that he put a system of drawing and design. Because if you look at all the art in this book, it's definitely more stylized and designy than um, realistic is what I'm looking for. Uh, it's, a, it's a more graphic approach to the figure. Uh, but once again, I learned a few things from it just by looking at it again. And I hope you did too. Uh, if you really love this book, I will say uh, good luck finding it, maybe on eBay. Um, that's, like I said, where I found it. Sometimes I'll just go to eBay and pop in figure drawing books and see what comes up. So thank you again for joining me. I am Andy Smith. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button, the notification bell, Leave me some comments because apparently YouTube loves it when people leave comments. And I do too. I read them all. I usually try to give a thumbs up to the comments and a little hit the little heart button and stuff. So please leave me comments as well. And uh, check out Cordrath the Reckoning Bombastic Barbarian Action that you will totally enjoy. Thank you and I'll catch you on the next book look. Indiegogo.